Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosell, and today I'm going to be talking again about one of my all-time favorite uh, tech subjects, potentially one of my all-time favorite subjects, that is backup and archive, especially for, well, really for digital data. I know that uh, people tend to hit the mental snooze button whenever the word uh, backup is mentioned, and when people hear that there are folks uh, who are still using optical media in 2024 for backup and archive, optical media being CDs, DVDs, uh, Blu-rays and uh, the M-Disc, which I'm always advocating for, people tend to be kind of confused that those things are still actually used and they are still in widespread use for archive. And the reason for that is that amazingly, quite amazingly, when you think about all the developments we've had in data capacity, right, the continuous, um, the continuously smaller amount of physical space that we can fit continuously growing forms of physical data, that's been extraordinary. The rise of cloud computing has been terrific and fantastic and what we can do with the cloud and how economical the cloud is. But there's this issue that's been neglected and is kind of frozen in time in the storage industry and that's called data permanence. Data permanence, we're talking about forms of physical storage media that can actually hold data and not lose it over the long term. And the problem with a lot of the newer storage technologies, whether we're talking about HDD, S, uh, SSD, I always call it SDD by mistake, SSD, uh, or NVMe, whatever you want, the modern storage, physical storage media are not very good at holding on to data. Uh, people are under the illusion that LTO, tape, is a fantastic uh, long-term storage media just because it's what enterprises use for archive. And it's not actually the case. The average, the data lifespan of LTO is commonly put at about 30 years. That means that your tapes, now you can have systems for, uh, for trying to prevent bit rot and data rot and tape rot in this case, but it's not actually a data medium that is fantastically built for the long term. People who remember VHS tapes and uh, watching as, v as, your, as your grandfather's VHS collection gra gradually got worse and worse uh, know this. Um, but optical media is actually, although it seems ridiculous in 2024, pretty good for archival. And certain products like the M-Disc and the archival grade CDs and DVDs are actually pretty much, to the best of my, best of my knowledge, the only physical storage technologies that have actually been built with the idea of data permanence in mind. So as much as I love my optical media and I think that uh, a lot more people could and potentially should be using it, it's not something I recommend for every backup project. And the simple reason for this or the simple rule of thumb when optical media is good and when it's not the right tool comes down to the difference between backup and archive. Something that's kind of unfortunate about backup and archive is that colloquially people just tend to refer to it all as backup, right? You tend to talk about backing up your data. You don't tend to talk so much about, oh, I'm doing an archival project or I'm digitally archiving my data. So if you take the stuff I'm using the MDisk for, I mentioned many times that what I'm using it for is basically archiving these YouTube videos. When this YouTube video is done, it goes on to my NAS, then it goes on to disk then it's copied to an offsite disk library as well. And that's actually an archival project. That's not backup. But if you asked a friend, if a friend asked me, Daniel, what's this weird thing you have for Blu-rays and why are you doing Blu-rays? I would say, oh, I back up my YouTube videos. Now, again, I'm using the colloquial term backup, but really what it is is an archive. What is the difference? Backup, let's take your traditional backup situation of you want to back up your operating system, right? Whatever you're running, you want to protect yourself against the possibility that you will change something on your computer or the computer will go bad and it's not related to hardware, it's a software issue, so you'd like to be able to reverse the state of that system. That's a great backup project. In this case, we would be taking a backup using something like um, as a Linux user, I'm mostly only familiar with the stuff we have on Linux. Um, what's it called again? I can't remember the name of the program. It's like Time Shift. Time Shift, I think it's called. So Time Shift is a backup utility and I can take a snapshot. And if my computer goes bad, I can roll back from that 
to bring my computer back in time. Likewise, in the realm of web hosting, um, if you ha- if you have shared hosting, you host a website, you probably have one or several backup tools with your hosting, like Jet Backup and other ones. And those are backup tools. You have a some copy of your data that you can use to reverse changes to your file system or back up to a point in time, right? It's in the name, back up to go back. Now, the difference between an archival pool is if we have uh, the YouTube data, let's say the the copy of my YouTube videos I mentioned, let's say I decided, um, you know, I made some changes in YouTube and I deleted some parts of this video, the one you're watching, and I said, I don't like that, flip, I can change it in YouTube, let me just go to the backup disk I made, right, and put that onto my computer. Now, that doesn't work. I can't use that to update the YouTube video. So that's really the fundamental difference between uh, backup and archive. So for archival, optical media is great, except in a few situations, and I'm going to talk about those in today's video. For for archive, sorry. For backup, it's terrible. Um, I'm not saying that you couldn't use store backups on optical media, but because the process of backing up requires reading from your backup and applying changes to your current system. Optical media is just too slow. The read-write speeds are inferior to uh, to hard drives, to HDDs, which are, which are fine for backups, um, and therefore it's just not really a good, uh, good medium. So we talked about backup versus archival and why uh, the, rule of some, the rule of thumb that I would suggest is that optical is good for some archival projects. Optical is not a good medium for backup. Um, generally speaking, or really almost always speaking. The second thing that I would say is uh, where arch- where archival is, the is optical media is not the right choice. Now we're talking about backup and archiving today as usual. But let's talk just about uh, file systems for a moment. Like, have you ever seen a computer? And, pe- and people are going to correct me because I'll say, well, technically the hard hard drives and SSD, SSD use a disk, right? It's in the acronym. There's a disk there. But it's a different uh, it's a different technology. So I don't th- I've never seen I I would be interested to know um, from any computer scientists in the room. Could you, if you really wanted to, build a computer with the uh, with the storage as a Blu-ray? I don't think it would work. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's certainly something I've never seen, and it would make absolutely no sense because for a live file system like what your computer is running on, you need to be continuously writing and reading from sectors on the disk, and uh, Optical was never intended for that. So it's not a choice for live file systems. Again, I'd be intrigued to know if anyone's ever done this as a random science experiment, but as a practical thing, it's a non-runner. Uh, so that's another uh, thing that it does not work for. The second, uh, third reason when optical media is the wrong choice is for high capacity projects. So we know that the problem with optical media is that the uh, Blu-rays cap out at 128 gigs. That's called BDXL. And that is a quad layer Blu-ray, four layers of data stored on the Blu-ray. Uh, there have been attempts to make optical store more data. We saw Sony come out with what they call the optical uh, optical disk archive, ODA, and they kind of made this like optical cartridge based on putting a few disks together and the, pro- the project was discontinued. The drives cost a bomb, it was proprietary, uh, people didn't like it. People were maybe happy with LTO, uh, but it was kind of billed as an LTO killer at the time. So, um, when you have the storage topping out at only 100 gigs and you can go down to your local computer store and buy a one terabyte hard drive for 20 bucks i can't remember it's been a while since i bought a bought a bought a hard drive but i think they're about that 2050 whatever the case may be and if you're an enterprise and you have an lto drive and you can buy lto cartridges storing multiple terabytes of data then you're looking at optical and you're like, why would anyone want to use these things, right? They're tiny. But for moving away from the enterprise, for personal projects like folks backing up onto the MDisk um, who don't have that kind of data and don't need that kind of data. For example, let's talk, I'll talk about my podcast again for a second. Um, 
I can fit a lot of podcasts on 25, just 25 gig Blu-ray. I can fit maybe a year's worth of podcasts on a 100 gigabyte uh, Blu-ray. So it actually becomes fine for that purpose. If I want to just create archives of my podcasts, optical suddenly, people say you can fit data on it. And I'm like, actually 100 gigs, I'm saying one year conservatively, if my, uh, let's say my files are 50 megabytes per episode, you know, you could fit a lot. Um, and of course, another reason people like optical frequently is for small writes of worm data. We talked about worm yesterday, write once, read many times. And we talked about why worm can be used for uh, ransomware protection. We talked about why word, why word, why worm can be used for um, for creating an immutable file system for compliance. Uh, and that's another reason why optical is used for, for instance, in financial reports. Uh, patient healthcare records, uh, high security documents, trade secrets, all this kind of stuff, where let's say your trade secret might be only a few PDFs, it doesn't take up very much room, put that on an M-Disc and it'll stay good, uh, probably for your lifetime, you know, uh, for sure. So, and then the final reason is, so we talked about the capacity constraint, why LTO would be better if you're doing, if you have big data, But with the caveat that what you're getting with LTO in capacity, you're losing in data permanence versus optical. So right now, I would say there's no perfect solution on there. Uh, We would love to we would love to see optical scale up that we would have one terabyte disks or 10 terabyte disks. And if you think about it, LTO is it's kind of crazy that tape is still the norm in archive. There's no reason why, to my mind, if optical were to scale up as we hope it will, that it could not replace LTO tape archives, right? It would be, we just would have to develop new robotics for archive retrieval, um, but the process of writing disk onto a laser is more modern than writing disk onto tape. And uh, with tape, we also have the additional constraint that it's a linear uh, linear data, data format, data storage medium. So uh, I don't think it's crazy to say that optical, if, if anyone actually takes optical beyond Gen 3, that optical will replace tape libraries or can and should replace tape libraries. Uh, finally, we have uh, when you're in, here's another problem with today's optical storage is when you're backing up really big files. I just realized I'm, I've been pulling up my, uh, pulling up my t-shirt here for the last uh, probably 20 minutes or 12 minutes. Oh, this is going quicker than I thought. Um, so the final project, the final problem with optical at its current data capacities is we talked about 125 gigs being the biggest optical media you can currently buy. What happens if you are working at CERN or NASA and you need to store and archive files that are 200 gigs? Uh, right now, there is just no option. Like that's the file, you can cut it up. It's not an archive. The file is, the, it's a huge SQL database. Now there aren't gonna be that many files meeting this criteria, but there are gonna be some. And that's another reason why today uh, optical can be problematic, even for archiving. Uh, when you have very very big files, um, then uh, or you know you have an you have an archive with files that are fifty gigs each, it's going to be a pain in the butt to archive onto optical because you can only put two files onto each disk. Uh, again, we're talking here about enterprise scale databases that probably people wouldn't be thinking about optical in the first place. But I just wanted to put that out as a reason why uh, it would not work. That's it. Uh, I hope this little kind of brain, uh, brain. I don't like to use the word brain dump. It sounds a bit crude, but uh, brain, uh, brain drop. How about brain drop? Uh, I hope this has been of interest. If you have thoughts about uh, the suitability of optical media, uh, the non-suitability, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you as always. Thanks for watching today's video and until the next time.